step down here. <laughs> Bifocals. <laughs> David Joseph Cox, Omaha, Nebraska, was born and raised in northwest Missouri, the son of the late Ed and Diva Cox of Shenandoah, Iowa. Dan graduated from Rockport High School in 1968 and entered Tarkill College that same year. For those of you who were attending college around 1970, I want you to think back. You see the man sitting in the southeast corner of the student union? He's wearing frayed bell-bottom jeans and boots. His long hair reaches almost to the plaid shirt he is wearing. His back is leaning against the wall and his boots are resting on the seat of the booth. Through his thick glasses, he appears to be staring at an open three-inch thick book. Clamped in his teeth is the stem of his church warden pipe, and occasionally smoke emanates from his mouth. This is Dan Cox. <laughs> During his tenure at Tarkill College, he pledged Alpha Lambda Sigma in 1970 and is of the charter class of the Delta Gamma chapter of Alpha Sigma Phi Fraternity, 1970. He was active in campus life. Dan received his Bachelor of Arts in English in 1971 from Tarkill College. In 1972 was a big year for Dan. He earned his teaching endorsement and he married his sweetheart, Nancy Fender, also a TC grad. He began his teaching career at Parliament Community Schools near Eldon Island, where he taught for two years. Now it's going to sound like Dan can't keep a job. <laughs> He received his Master of Arts from the University of Nebraska at Omaha in 1977 and his Ph.D. in Curriculum and Instruction from the University of Nebraska, Lincoln, in 1992. After receiving his M.A., he taught in Sydney, Iowa High School for 10 years, interrupted by a year of teaching freshman composition at Iowa State University. While finishing his doctoral coursework, Dan taught secondary language arts methods at UNL, then taught for 10 years at Peru State, where as professor of education, he also eventually served as director of field experiences, director of graduate program in education, and chair of the education department. His career also included participation with the National Council of Teachers of English, the National Association for the Accreditation of Teacher Education, and the Nebraska Council for Teacher Education. Dan and Nancy moved to Omaha in 1999 when he was employed by Midland Lutheran College in Fremont, Nebraska. He was associate professor of education there for two and a half years before joining the faculty of Fremont Public High School. He developed a writer's workshop for Fremont Public Schools and taught the workshop creative writing, honors American literature, and advanced placement literature for 11 and a half years. When Nancy developed brain cancer, he left a teaching career with her to be with her until her passing in January of 19, or 2013, when he retired after almost 41 years as a professional educator. Dan has served as an English educator and guide for thousands of students in his career and continues to advise in his retirement. Dan serves as a positive example and mentor for all who are watching or are willing to listen. He is a man of honor and integrity. A straight up, look you in the eye, believe what he says because it's the truth type of guy. Dan's writings have been published in the Ozark Mountaineer, Nebraska Language Arts Bulletin, English Journal, and ICTE Newsletter. In 2014, he published a collection of his poetry called Dandelions and Other, and Other Flowers, and I believe you have copies for sale here. Dan has been a leader on the le local level through community services wherever he has resided, as well as been a leader on the state and national level relative to his career. He continues to be a leader as well as cheerleader wherever he lays his head. He is presently on the board of the Benson Theater. This is a nonprofit organization working to restore a 1920s Vaudeville Theater in the Benson District of Omaha and create a space for arts, teaching, performance, and also showing movies. In the last 20 years, he has also been active with the Alumni Association, has served on the board, and participated fairly regularly in work weekends. Dan continues to support the Rankin Project 
and the revival efforts of Tar Heel College through his generous donations of time, labor, and financial support. Dan and Nancy have two sons, Clayton and Matthew of Omaha. Clayton and his wife, Brittany, have two sons, Ke Keller and Connor, and a daughter, Quinn. Matthew will marry Emily Ingalls this, later this summer, and Dan will gain another granddaughter, Lauren. Dan has two brothers, Ben of Shenandoah, Mike of Tarkio, and several nieces and nephews, and great nieces and great nephews. Through one of his former students, Dan met Eleanor Shirley, originally from Sydney, Iowa. They recently married and make their home in Omaha and part time in Keystone, Colorado. He's a man you want to, and a man you are sure to know. My friend, Dr. Dan Cox. I told you just to read what I sent you, not to add to it. I had to make something up to make you look good. I think you didn't tell him the truth. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for this award, this honor. Um, it's been a ride. Uh, Henry Thoreau is one of my favorite authors, and any of my high school students will recognize if you have built castles in the air, your work need not be in vain. That is where they should be. Now put foundations under them. This is it. This is where we started, all of us here, building the foundations of the lives that we have enjoyed. But I also, piggybacking on what has already been said, tell people all the time that in order for a person to fly, to soar in life, you have to have roots. It seems dichotomous, you know, opposites, that you, know, you can't fly if you're rooted. I'm here to tell you folks, there is no life that rises unless it begins with a solid foundation. Right here. The reasons you come back, the reasons we come back, the reasons we support Tarkio College is because it gave us <coughs> foundations. The idea that there were people who were going to be here for us, no matter what we did, rise up, fall down. I don't know about you, but my brothers and sisters out here as well as my family, were the first hands to reach out when I fell. And they were the first ones, like this, when I was flying. And it goes on. Because when you've got those roots and you start to soar, you start giving other people roots. Children, we do that for all of them. The effect in our lives, it spreads. It, it, you can't help it. If you've got those roots, that foundation, and you've got those castles in the air, you invite people in, you pull them up, and that's what we do. That's also the reason why I support the efforts to bring this phoenix out of the ashes. To set fire to this old 